nests alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Why are you here this morning? Did you come here this morning because, well, it's Sunday, and that's what we do? Did you come here this morning thinking, well, if I don't come, if I don't show up, people are going to ask. People are going to talk to me. Well, where were you? We missed you. Now, it's been pretty easy with COVID-19, with the pandemic, right? It, people aren't asking as much because, well, they must have been at home watching the service there, right? Did you come this morning because, well, I have to take the Lord's Supper? That's the one thing I have to do. Or did you come this morning because you truly wanted to draw near to God and worship Him? Think about all the different reasons you may have come to an assembly. And oftentimes we might find ourselves not here to actually worship. We came to put a check next to, the, next to the box that we were present. We attended. We sat in a pew or a chair. I'm good. But is that really what we're trying to do on a Sunday morning? Is that really what we're trying to do when we gather together? We started this series a couple weeks ago talking about the idea of worship, and I introduced uh, some words to us that week that focused on three things la that last time. Bringing a gift when you come to worship God. You need to bring a gift. Worship is when an individual calls out to God, and worship is the idea of sending something up to God. But this week we're going to look at a different concept. What we need to understand, at least going back to the Old Testament, is that worship had to do with going to a particular place. In Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 5, it says, But you are to seek the place the Lord your God will choose from among all your tribes to put his name there for his dwelling. To that place you must go. Of course, that place was going to eventually be the temple in Jerusalem, and before that, it was the tabernacle as they wandered around and pitched their tents, and they camped, and they would go to the tabernacle to perform their acts of worship. But the concept I want us to focus on this morning is the idea of drawing near to God. There's a Hebrew word called, that is, karab, to approach, to draw near by means of a sacrifice, or another Hebrew word, nagash, to draw near, to approach. And so the essence of worship this morning that we want to focus on is the idea that we are drawing near, the attempt on our part, on man's part, to approach God, to come before Him, to come into His presence and worship Him. Now I want you to think about the Old Testament journey of worship. If, if the worship was at the tabernacle, if the worship was at the temple, there, you had to go from where you were to, to going up to Jerusalem, to going up Mount Zion, to get to the temple and, and to go there to worship. If it was the tabernacle and you were in the camp on the outside, you had to go through the Levite camp, you had to get there, but there are a lot of barriers that you had to go through to get to presence of God, to get to the point where you could worship God. And when you look at the psalm that was read for us just a moment ago, Psalm 42, we sang the song, as the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants for you, O God, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Now notice the last phrase, when shall I come and appear before God? Here is this captive in Babylon that is pinning these words. He is desiring God. He wants to be with God. He wants to worship God. He wants to be in his presence. But because he's in Babylon, he can't do what? 
he can't go to the temple. Not only can he not go back to Jerusalem, but the temple's been destroyed anyway. How heartbreaking that must have been. I want to go to the temple to worship. There's other psalms, Psalm 43, verses 3 and 4. O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling places. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and upon the lyre I shall praise you, O oh God, my God. How about Psalm 84? Do we have this desire to come before God, to be in his presence? Psalm 84, verses 1 through 7. How lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. To go to the temple courts, to be there, right? My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. The bird also has found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, how blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Salah. How blessed is the man whose strength is in you in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Passing through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The early rain also covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears before God in Zion. As you start to, to hear these words and understand, they're, they're going on a pilgrimage, on this journey to go before the Lord, to worship Him. Let us go. And let's worship God. We sang songs this morning, and there's other songs that we could sing. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. That's the idea from the Old Testament. And we do the very same thing today, not, not physically. We're not going to a temple. What are, we, what are we able to do today because of Christ, because of what he's done for us? What are we able to do? Wherever we are, whether we're here in this building or not, wherever we are, what can we do? I can enter his courts with praise because of Jesus. I can stop whatever I'm doing and I can begin to worship God. Or how about the song, Lord, we come before thee now and at thy feet we humbly bow. Are we drawing near to God? Are we desiring to come into his presence and to be with him? Just as there were barriers in the Old Testament, there's spiritual barriers for us today. But I wanted us to take a look here at number one, the barrier of the covenant, right? The barrier of the covenant. So here's the first barrier that we need to overcome. When you look at the camp of Israel that I have on the screen here, uh, you'll notice that you got the, the tribes on the outside, Asher, Dan, Naphtali, Issachar, Judah, Zebulun, Simeon, Reuben, Gad, Manasseh, Ephraim. Uh, they're all on the outer perimeter of the camp. Hopefully this laser is... No, it says, no thank you. So you've got the outside of the camp, of all them, but you are not allowed into that camp unless you have a covenant relationship with God. Unless you are of the people of God, you are not allowed into even the outer camp. You need to be of the people of God to, to be in that camp. In Exodus 19, verses 5 and 6, God offered to make a covenant with his people Israel, to make them a special people. And in Exodus chapter 24 and verse 7, the people of Israel accepted that covenant. They said, we, we, we want this. We want to be a part of this. We want to worship you. We want to have a relationship with you. We will keep the laws, the covenant that you have given us this day. And they are going to go for it. They are God's special people at that moment in time. They've accepted it. Well, there's a covenant today. There is a covenant today 
that is offered through the gospel of Jesus Christ, when one accepts the gospel, when one obeys that gospel, they enter into that relationship, that covenant relationship with God. You become a special people of God in that moment. And you are then allowed into the camp of Israel, in a sense. You're, you're in the camp of the children of God. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And you'll notice in verses 12 and 13 how Paul is is discussing this, this issue between the Jews and the Gentiles and, and how God has brought them and made one new man. But he's talking about the Gentiles here, verses 12 and 13. He says, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But notice verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. If you want to enter into the camp of God's people, if you want to overcome the first barrier in coming near and drawing near to God, to come to worship Him, then you need to first off join in. You need to accept the gospel. You need to obey the gospel. So that Jesus, through his blood, can bring you into the camp, into the commonwealth of Israel, as Paul puts it here in Ephesians chapter 2, to be a child of his. The second barrier that we need to overcome is the barrier of intention. The barrier of intention. So just because you're in the camp doesn't mean that you're automatically worshiping God just because you're in the camp. I mean, they're setting up their tents, they're doing things, they're, they're living, they're making do, they go to bed, they're doing those things. They've just got their camp set up and they're in the commonwealth of Israel. They're there. But they still need to go somewhere to worship. They're not worshiping in their tents. They've still, they still have to have an intention to go towards the tabernacle. And so they have to go through another barrier. And as you look at this barrier, you have the, the inner barrier of the camp, the Levites, and you've got the Marahites, you've got the priests over there, you've got the Kohathites, you've got the Gershonites. So you've got all of these people that are camped on the inner part, all right? And so you've got the outer camp, then you've got the inner camp. So you've got to pass through there. But you've got to have the intention of worshiping God to, to go through there. What do you need to do? Before you even start the journey to go through the inner part of the camp, you're, you're getting your, your, your sacrifice ready. You're, you're going through. There's no reason for me as Manasseh to go anywhere towards that place unless I'm, I'm intending to worship. There's no reason for me to start moving in that direction. I've got no job in that direction. I need to intend to go before God and worship if I'm going to move towards the tabernacle, if I'm going to move towards the temple. And so if we're going to cross that barrier, I have to intentionally draw near to God. I have to have that in my mind and in my heart. I'm leaving the place where I am on the outer camp, and I'm intending to go before God. I've made some of that, some of that preparation. I've got that intent. But that's the next part of this, which goes in with the intention, is the third barrier, the barrier of preparation. If I'm intending to go, what do I got to do? I got to make all those preparations before I go. And I need to intend to go. I need to prepare to go. But when you think about the Israelites, they had an issue with cleanliness, didn't they? If you go back and you start reading the Old Testament, you start to come across these, this idea of being unclean and being clean. What, who were those who were unclean? Well, if you happen to touch a, a dead body, you were unclean for a period of time. If you were a woman and you were on uh, that cycle of the month, you were considered unclean for a period of time. If you had given birth, you were considered unclean for a period of time. If you had a skin disease, if you had leprosy, you were unclean. And therefore, you could not go to the tabernacle. You could not go there until you were considered 
clean until you went through the ceremonial process after that time period had lapsed, however long that time period might have been. And then you go through the ceremonial process to become clean once again. And when I think about the psalmist uh, David in Psalm 51, what does, he, what does he ask in that psalm? He says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. And we don't have to go through the, this ceremonial, the ceremonial washings. We, we don't have those things that we have to do today to, to go into the temple or to go to the tabernacle. But we still have to intentionally prepare ourselves to come before God and worship Him. If I just get dressed and go out the door and, and come here... But I have not even put any thought whatsoever into what I'm actually doing. I'm just going by routine. I'm just going by tradition. I'm just showing up to the building because, well, that's what I do. Did I actually come here to worship or did I just come out of habit? I need to make sure that I have intended to come here. But I've also prepared my heart. I've asked God, please, give me a clean heart. Forgive me of my sins. Because I want to come and I want to bring my sacrifices to you. But I know, according to David in Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17 there, that you don't delight in just sacrifices. I could come and I could give you all that I have, but if I have absolutely no intention, no meaning behind it, except for that, well, I just I want you to... Just forget about the sins I committed or I want you to. Where's my motivation? Am I coming before him with a clean, pure, sincere heart, truly worshiping him and drawing near to him? Am I bringing righteous sacrifices, as David talks about it at the end of that psalm? A sacrifice that has the right intentions behind it, the right heart, the right mindset. A lot of times we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 before the Lord's Supper. And we talk about that idea of examining oneself before partaking. Do you examine yourself before you come to worship God? Do you make sure that your heart is clean, that it's prepared, that you are ready to bow before Him? I've got to be honest. I don't always come prepared. I don't always come prepared to, to be before my God. To worship Him in the way that I ought to. I show up. I, my physical body is here. But my mind or my spirit, my heart, might be somewhere completely different. I need to, I need to overcome the barrier of intention. I need to intend... To be here. And I need to prepare myself. I need to overcome the barrier of preparation. And come here ready to worship God. Wherever that might be. Whether it's here in this building. Or even in my home. Or at the office. If I take a moment to stop and worship Him. I need to make sure I have prepared myself to do so. The fourth barrier that we need to overcome is the barrier of priesthood. When you look at this diagram on the... I wish my laser pointer was working. If you look at this diagram, you've got the outer camp, you've got the inner camp, but now you're moving towards the tabernacle. And you've got the fact that only priests get to go into the tabernacle. That only priests get to enter into the holy place. If you are not a priest, you can't. Enter in. So how do I become a priest? If I'm not a priest, I don't even get to go in there. Or if, okay, if I'm in the Old Testament, then I'm asking the priests to take care of the things that, that I've prepared, the things that I've done, and they're going to go and, and perform the acts for me. But we're not under the Old Covenant. We're in the New. So how do I become a priest.
Turn over to 1 Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And coming to him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God, you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Skip on down to verses 9 and 10. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The only way we become priests is through Jesus Christ, is through the blood of Jesus. Once we enter into a covenant through Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, we become priests and we can enter in. We can enter into the place to worship God. When you think about the Old Testament, you had, uh, you had certain people that were only allowed to be priests. In Exodus uh, chapter 29 and verse 4, Uh, It talked about bringing Aaron and his sons so that they could be uh, ceremonially washed and cleaned. And then they'd go into this basin and they were immersed in in, in this pool in this basin and they were washed clean. And only then, after you had been immersed and washed clean, could you put on the priestly garments and then go into the presence of God. Nobody, according to Numbers chapter 16 and verse 40, except for... Aaron and his sons could enter in. And Korah and those who followed him in his rebellion there learned the hard way. Korah and 250 of his followers died in rebellion because they did not listen to that. Because only Aaron and his sons could enter in. So, have you been consecrated by being immersed and clothed with Christ? It's a beautiful statement in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27 where Paul talks about the fact that all of you who have been baptized baptized into Christ Jesus and have been clothed by Christ have been clothed in Christ Jesus. You see, as the priest would be washed and then would put on the priestly garments and get to go into the holy place, guess what's happened for us? If we've obeyed the gospel, we've been baptized, we've been immersed, we've been washed, we've been cleansed. We put on those priestly garments. But those priestly garments aren't, the, aren't all the fancy ones that man made and everything that was listed in Exodus and the other passages in the Old Testament. But it's Christ. It's Jesus. He's the clothes that we put on. He's made us priests so that we could draw near to God so that we can come before him. And then the final barrier is the barrier of atonement. And that's when you would enter into the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was. And of course, priests could enter into the temple. They could enter into the holy part. They could do those things. They could offer up incense. They could do all that, but they could not go past that veil into the Holy of Holies. Only one person could do that. And that was the high priest. Only one person could go into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle the blood on the Ark of the Covenant, sprinkle it around in there for the atonement, for the forgiveness of the camp, of the whole of Israel. Go ahead and turn over to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. 
We get to enter into the holy place only because of the blood of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, we are encouraged by the Hebrew writer. He says, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And the only reason we can do that is because of the blood of Jesus, because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Go back to Hebrews chapter 10 and look at verse 22. Let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The only way we can draw near with full assurance of faith is by having our hearts sprinkled clean by the blood of Christ. Our bodies being washed in baptism. It's not the outward removal of dirt from the flesh, but it is that appeal to God for a good conscience, as Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3. Being washed, being cleansed, overcoming that barrier of atonement. We need to be forgiven of our sins if we are to come into the presence of of God. What is worship? Worship is a lot of things, and we'll talk more about it. But today, worship is intentionally approaching God, coming into His presence, going from where I am, wherever I am, not just physically, but in my mind, in my heart, the secular pursuits that I might be, that I might have, that I'm, that I'm focused on, instead of Continuing down that path, I stop and I take a moment to spiritually come before God. You see, those of us who truly worship make a spiritual journey to God. We are told in John chapter 4, verse 24, those who are going to be those true worshipers are those who worship in spirit and truth. And today, as we've talked about this idea of drawing near and making this journey, this pilgrimage, I've got to make that spiritually. I don't have to physically go to a temple. I don't have to physically come to the church building to worship. I better spiritually journey and come ready to worship God. Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2, once again. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Worship is going to meet with God. And if I'm going to meet with Him, I need to cross the barrier of covenant. I need to enter into a covenant with Him, have that relationship with God. I need to cross the barrier of intention. I better intend in my mind and in my heart that I'm going to worship Him. And not only do I need to intend it, I need to prepare for it. I need to be ready to do it. Not just come haphazardly. Or I'm partially here and I'm partially not. I need to come sincerely and wholeheartedly prepared to worship God. And I need to be a priest. I need to overcome the barrier of the priesthood. Well, the only way I can become a priest is this, as if I've been washed by the blood of Jesus. He's the one that allows me into the priesthood as my high priest. And I need to cross the barrier of atonement. I need to have all my sins cleansed and washed away by the blood of Christ. If that does not happen, I cannot draw near to God the way that I desire to. The way that Psalm 42 shows me that desire. As the deer pants for the water brooks. If you are desiring God today in this moment, if you want a relationship with Him, if you want to draw near to Him, then you need to cross over these barriers. You need to move into that relationship. And it starts by accepting the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Not just hearing it and accepting it in that sense, but accepting it in the sense that I'm ready 
to fulfill it. I'm ready to obey it. I'm ready to be immersed in Christ Jesus. I'm ready to live my life walking in the light as He Himself is in the light. If you're ready to draw near to God this morning and start that process, come now while we stand and while we sing. Nearer, still nearer, Lord, to Thy heart. Draw me, my Savior, so precious Thou art. Fold me, O oh, fold.